Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, or Chris Giarmo, depending on what you wanna call me today. I am here with a makeup tutorial for this look. It's a version of the look that I wear in David Byrne's American Utopia using products exclusively from black-owned makeup brands. Welcome to my tutorial. So if you haven't watched my full drag black owned makeup brand tutorial look, please go check that out. In that video, I am super clear and concise uh, about why buying black is important right now and forever and how wealth redistribution and signal boosting can really help make a sustained difference in a lot of these social movements that we're witnessing. Buying black is just like a very easy way to start to redistribute some of that wealth that was not fairly distributed from the start. I'm not gonna go into all of that depth here. This is gonna be a little bit more of a chit chatty video where I answer some questions that y'all have submitted to me on Instagram. And I just talk more a little bit extemporaneously about various issues and things. And check out my uh, other video in this trio of buy black videos, a tutorial on how to get this look using nail polish from black owned nail polish brands. But if you want to see how to get this kind of editorial boy glam American utopia look, keep on watching. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> if you don't know who I am, I'm Kimberly Clark. I'm a drag queen here on YouTube, but I'm also Chris Giarmo, a performer. I uh, most recently had a little stint on the Broadway in a show called David Burns American Utopia. I was a backing vocalist, dancer, dance captain, vocal captain, and I choreographed one number in that show. In addition to the Broadway run, before that we did a, a world tour in 2018. We're gonna do another Broadway run if the world doesn't fully explode. But we're, we've also, uh, we also filmed the show, uh, and when I say we, I mean Spike Lee. So, <laughs> I saw some of the footage. It is, I, like I can't even use words to describe how incredible it's going to be, uh, and I don't really have to because it's coming out on HBO. So stay tuned for American Utopia on HBO. I know there's gonna be people that are gonna watch the film version of the show and see my makeup look and be like, who is that? What the hell is he wearing? What is that? And this is the video that's gonna help you <laughs> get that look. Now, it is not the exact makeup look that I did from our 144 shows on the road and 100 shows on Broadway. Lots, did a lot. But I am using all products from black owned makeup brands today. I'm definitely swapping out some products for products that I have not used before. So I'm curious to see how this look turns out. It's a little bit of an experiment. Okay, so first off, let's start with some skincare products that I've been using recently that I've really enjoyed. For toner, I, as you may know, I use tea tree water. Like, I just make it myself. I mix tea tree oil and some water in a spray bottle. That's kind of just what I use to tone my skin every day after cleansing. But I was checking out this amazing website called Black and Green, which is a marketplace for black-owned businesses that are focusing on green beauty and skincare. So not only are you supporting black owned businesses, but you're supporting like environmentally conscious and all natural and ethical businesses as well. Found this brand, Anne's Apothecary, and I bought some of this. It's tea tree floral water. It's basically like the lush tea tree water that you can get. And frankly, it's actually uh, comparable in price, which is interesting. Just a beautiful kind of floral water with tea tree hydrosol and different kinds of essences. And wonderful, yay. This is a lip balm. It is the big balm from uh, Zandra Beauty. It's just like a lovely, wonderful lip balm. And I just love the story behind this brand. Zandra Beauty was created by Zandra. She, I think she's like 19 years old right now. She cre created this brand in Buffalo uh, when she was nine. She wanted to buy more lip balm and her dad wouldn't let her because she had too many lip balms. So she decided to just make her own. And then she started like selling it at church and like all these other community events and the brand took off and now it's like a multi-million dollar brand. Like, so many of these stories of black entrepreneurs and black owned businesses 
are in line with all of those narratives of like indie businesses, small businesses, because that is just the way that equity and access has existed for black entrepreneurs in our country. You don't often hear the story of like a young black entrepreneur inheriting millions of dollars and becoming a business mogul. Like that just is not something that happens. Like you hear much more kind of like grassroots, indie, community-based organization and creating these these incredible brands. If you support that kind of work and that kind of ethos, just generally, then buying black is like totally in line with that ethos, right? Make sense? Okay. It's a big, giant lip balm. Okay, let us start with primer and let's get to answering some questions instead of me just rambling for 20 minutes. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna prime with my Fenty Beauty Pro Filter True Matte Primer. This is her matte primer. Never used this before. I've just swatched it. So I'm just gonna take out like three pumps or so and I'm just gonna use my fingers to apply it to my face. Now, I, I think I'm a little shiny just because I've been schwitzing just a little bit sitting here, but let's see how this works. Uh, I'm going to start with this. Why not? Let's start with this question, just because we're here. Someone asked, what's your take on COVID becoming a political issue? Okay, so if you're watching this, and it's summer 2020, which is when I'm filming this, we are in the middle of a pandemic. It is still happening. It is not over. It has not peaked. We are not done. The curve has not flattened. We're in the middle of it. And if you're like me, uh, maybe you've known someone or someone in your immediate family has passed away from COVID-19. I had a, a relative of mine die of COVID-19, and I've known plenty of other people that have passed or have been ill or contracted it. It's very real. It's legit. The scientific community overwhelmingly has made a non-political statement about this. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Wear a fucking mask. Wear a mask when you go grocery shopping. Wear a mask outside when you can't socially distance, which means moving out in the world, in a city, anywhere, in a grocery store, wherever you are. Just wear a mask, wear a mask. And if you think there's like political or personal reasons not to, then you have to reckon with the fact that you're responsible for potentially killing other people. Someone, another question, this is a good segue, I guess. Someone asked me if they feel that the beauty community as a whole is starting to shift towards ethical consumerism. And I think, yeah, it is. I think a lot of communities are, a lot of different industries and different practices, and people are realizing how their personal experiences, practices, and the way that we each individually move through the world affect other people. And, you know, we're seeing that with people being more aware of, of how they spend their money, of how they vote. This is just another one of those things where you have to understand how you don't exist in a bubble, even if you think you do, uh, but uh, you don't. You Your decisions affect everyone else in the world, and in this specific case, you wearing a mask or not wearing a mask in public is a decision that affects the world and other people and their lives. So please, 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 please wear a mask. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, the, I think the beauty community is totally moving into a more ethical space. I The anti-hall movement is something that I helped you know, codify, uh, that has been encouraging to see just literally like millions of, of people adapt this kind of ideology of at least thinking, starting to think critically about consumerism, which is really the only goal, you know? I'm not here to tell anybody what to do to, to stop shopping completely. Obviously, I'm not saying makeup is all evil and bad. I'm about to put a ton of it on my face. Speaking of... Concealer. I stopped wearing foundation somewhere on the road. I would really use just like a powder foundation, but then I, I we just started performing like crazy hot places and it just like was not worth it. So I started figuring out how to do just like a little bit of concealer and a little bit of powder to kind of figure out the foundation situation. Uh, I will say I did all my own makeup for everything. Like everything. Like every TV appearance, every film, like I did my face. I did it. Tell a fun story about the lips later, but um, generally it's... It's all me. Anyway, this is the Pat McGrath Labs. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer and Corrector. And I'm pretty sure this is the lightest shade that she has. Yes, it's L1 is the shade. Pat McGrath, if you don't know who she is, I, I don't know. She's, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. She's legendary. So I'm just gonna do what I did on, on tour, which is just a touch of concealer here. like literally just that much. And then I'm gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna blend 
under the eye. Oh, wow, this is really light. And then onto the lid. This is going to be my eyeshadow base. I'm going to take this like up to the brow bone and just do my whole lid, really. Okay, so speaking of painting for TV, let's talk about SNL! Uh, if you don't know, I was on SNL. We played the second to last live SNL they did. It was hosted by John Mulaney. Again, I was, a, I was performing with David Byrne and my American Utopia family. We did two songs, and then I was also in a sketch. It was called Airport Sushi. Google it. It's, it's incredible. Me and Tendai, my incredible partner in crime on the stage, were uh, air traffic controllers at, in a LaGuardia Airport musical. Like, it was crazy. See, look, I mean, it was amazing. It felt like being a part of history. I mean, it, it was. Like, I, I've watched that show since I was a kid, you know? Always dreamed about being on it in some capacity. I'm excited to come back too. Maybe I'll host. People, like when I met Kate McKinnon, she came and saw our show before I did SNL. And it was just like amazing to talk to her because I was like, oh, you get this. Like you make a crazy show every week and it's live and it's like, it's as insane as like our insane Broadway life. It was just like, I felt like there was like a very, even though you know she's on TV and she's like a superstar and stuff, I felt like there was like a kind of very clear understanding. What they do every week is truly insane. And just, you know, just so you know, it's like however many people are in the cast, there's like a hundred people backstage. Like it is a city that it takes to make that show happen. And it's truly an incredible thing to watch. I, really, it was just like an insane honor to be able to be there and to be able to do what we did there. Anyway. This is the AJ Crimson Neutral Set Powder. It's neutral matte, loose powder. I've been using this powder for years in various capacities. Let me blot my sweaty face before I use it. It's translucent, but it's got a tiny little bit of pigment, so it's really nice. I'm going to be using a Juvia's Place J201 powder brush. Just gonna take a little bit of this. My brush, really tap it off, because this is... I don't wanna get full on cakey. And I'm just gonna set all that concealer. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and blended before I set it, so just do a finger pat, and then Set this, take a little bit more for the other eye, set that. And then I'm just gonna take this all over my whole face. Just like, give a little bit of mattification and a little bit of coverage. That's beautiful, gorgeous, okay. Is it time to like put eye makeup on? I think it's time to put eye makeup on. Okay, I'm gonna do this. This is the mothership Two palette by Pat McGrath. Um, this palette is $125. I had to use this palette. This is the Mothership 2. I think it's like probably the least popular Mothership palette. I don't know if you could see that insane green shift in that one shade. The, the, uh, my drag makeup look, I have to use a couple palettes. So I figured if I'm gonna use one palette for this look, I might as well go big or go home. I'm gonna use this. I'm taking this like matte purpley shade. Again, on a Juvia's Place blending brush. And I'm gonna place this here. The products that I'm using today, a lot of them are new, but hopefully this technique will be like, you know, it'll, it'll hold up. Outer corner, upper lid, you know, in the crease, my real crease, not my drag crease. And then blending it over in a C kind of to meet the front of my brow. Just like that. And do the same thing on the other eye. Ooh, how do you feel about the Kat Von D situation? So someone asked me on Instagram how I felt about Kat Von D and her statements implying that she was uh, not going to vaccinate her child. And I, I commented on it, I made like a statement about it. <laughs> 
I am not an anti-vaxxer, if you've gathered from any of the words that have been coming out of my mouth. I will say this, we do not have a good history of the medical institution and pharmaceutical companies being ethical. If you look at history of the way that different doctors and scientists and different medical communities have abused people of color in different test groups and experiments, look up the Tuskegee syphilis study if you want any kind of information about how fucked up things can get. So a kind of general distrust of institutionalized anything is warranted. It is absolutely warranted. And I feel like a lot of times the anti-vax community takes those like initial really valid fears and things that we should be concerned about as like people ingesting products and putting things into our bodies in any way, right? But there's often so many just lies that are tied up with it. So Kat Von D, you know, she's a figurehead. She runs a brand. Her words matter. She has a platform. And then I heard that she left. I had no idea. I'm gonna go in with this dark black. It's not technically a matte black. It has a little bit of shimmer in it, but I do not think that will read. But I'm just gonna put that like in the actual, real, like deepest part of the crease, so that outer corner, and just blending that a little bit in. So she's gone. So apparently now you can safely buy Kat Von D, sorry, KVD makeup without any of the money benefiting that person. What do you think? Let me know down below if you still support KVD or if you stopped supporting KVD and now if that's changed at all because she's left the brand. Curious to know what you think. I just want to say, no, nope, I don't use her stuff anymore. I haven't for a while. Never. I didn't bring... I didn't. I didn't use it on the road. I just didn't... Oh god. Okay, this is gorgeous. This is looking exactly right. Can you see how gorgeous these shadows have blended together too? Okay, and so then I'm just gonna like take this in a little bit more onto the lid. Okay, so my American Utopia look, if you're not aware, let's put a picture of it up. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. This is Sylvia Rivera, by the way. If you may have watched my anti-haul pride video, which is a year old now. Pride's coming back around, y'all. Time to catch up, pay attention, get bitter again. Part of that video was about promoting donations to the Sylvia Vera Law Project, and so many of you donated. I just wanna say thank you so much. It's an incredible organization. Someone made a donation in my name and sent me this beautiful poster of Sylvia Rivera. Thank you everyone that continues to donate. Check out my Instagram page. In my story highlights, I have a list of organizations that are supporting black trans women and people of color, and it, it's, you, you have to, we have to. So this is my American Utopia look. As you can tell, there's a, a silver shadow that's pretty prominent in the center. I don't have any silver, anything silver. So instead I'm gonna use this. It's like a gold pink shift shade. Put it on with my fingers, just in the center to pack it on. Ooh, she's chunky. So let's just see if I could do this without tons of fallout. Can you? Can you? Can you even stand it? I'm just gonna blend with my matte blending brush. And even, let's take some more of that black and just blend the edge there. <laughs> Can you see this fruit fly that is trying to get up in my gig? Now, Chris Giarmo, that's me, is a very sweaty man. So, <laughs> you know, Kim relies on like staying dry in order to maintain the false face structure. I can't do that as Chris. I really, like, my entire face will be schwitzing by the end of our 90 minute show in which I am on stage dancing and singing the whole time. So I've really had to adapt this look to just embrace the shine and the schwitz. See how that's transferring up into my crease? There's nothing I can do about that. I just have to kind of let it go. But when the shadows are like this pigmented, it kind of doesn't matter. I'm gonna go in with this, uh, another Juvia's Place brush, and this really, I think it's called like Astral something something. It's like a more sheer shade. 
and then I'm going to pop it on the inner corner and a little bit higher and that is so not enough for me so I'm going to take my finger again and just go in with my finger huh hmm. that's okay I think I've got something else that I can pop on the inner corner but let's go back in with that kind of goldy crazy shade first on that same brush let's see if I could just pack that closer to this crease line yeah like right here this is exciting this is where you can get very precise with the crease line because that's not gonna smudge like this area is gonna smudge just because of my eye movement but this won't so here is where I could be a little bit more cut creasy Let's deal with this inner corner right while we're here. I'm gonna use two products combined. So first is this, it's the Enlight Halo Powder in the shade Sun by Danessa Myricks. And this is like her kind of general highlighter powder. It's crazy beautiful and I like to wet it. And the thing that I'm using for to wet it is also my setting spray that I'll be using, which is this Plain Jane Beauty Coconut Water Setting Mist. I, like I just purchased it and then I got an email from Lake Louise who's the founder just really beautiful email about her personal experience of dealing with racism in America and it, I, it was I just felt like so happy to support someone who is using her platform to speak out about her personal experience and just be really honest and like connecting with people I don't know just I appreciated that that was really great and I love this and it's a great product to use to like wet things like this insane Highlighter powder, it's, you can't see it, it is too reflective. <laughs> but let's just dip this brush in and get a nice big bit of it. And now let's do a spritz. So now she's a little bit wet. Just gonna take this right on the inner corner, let's see. I mean, Oh, it's so pretty. It's so interesting. Like on the cheeks, you could see all the glitter and it feels like a very heavy glitter thing. I'm just, I just am dipping the brush in again and not wetting it again and just packing it on right where I put that. <gasps> Chunk that on mama and then pinky. I think this product is so versatile because it's buildable. So like I had to wet it to build it up which means that if you wanted to do just like a very subtle shine, you could just apply it dry. Have I fully abandoned all the questions? Where are we? Someone asks, will I be making more YouTube videos? I'm here right now. I've got another series that I'm working on. I'm not sure what it's called yet, but it'll be coming out very soon. But it's basically like a continuation of my listen up interviews that I've been doing. Chit chatty, discuss issues type thing. I have some really interesting people lined up to do that with me. Let's curl the lashes. I do not have an eyelash curler from a black-owned makeup brand. This is the only thing I'm gonna be showing on screen that's not from a black-owned makeup brand, but if anyone knows of a black-owned makeup brand that sells eyelash curlers, let me know. I'll buy it. Signal boosting, y'all. Easy to do. Why not? Taking the Pat McGrath Labs Perma Gel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil in Extreme Black. This is just a black coal eye pencil. Outer edge, the waterline. Edge, oh yeah, and I go under a little bit on the edge there. Entire tight line, or like as much as I could stand to do. And then I do a little bit above the lash line on the outer edge. No wing and no liquid liner. That is really nice. Pat is doing my eyes today. So then I'm gonna go back with that matte black from the Pat McGrath Mothership 2 palette. And I'm gonna just try to marry that liner. See, just a little bit with that shadow. Ugh. I think that's gorge. Yeah, so like I said, this isn't, it's not quite a matte black. It has some shimmer in it, but I feel like that's some kind of trick or something to make it richer without really making it shimmery. And then just trying to even out the shape a little bit, looking straight ahead to create the shape. Okay. Pat McGrath Labs Fetishize Mascara. Oh yeah. 
Look at that lash separation there. Can you see that? I'm gonna go back in and really fill in the uh, that tight line and right on the lash line. And then I'm gonna do another coat of this. I got a little bit of mascara on the lid there. I think I can just brush that away. Hopefully I'm taking a little bit of that crazy gold thing shimmer. Bye bye. I'm gonna take that Pat McGrath, that same one I've just been using all over the lid, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it under the center here, and even out a little bit onto that black. How did the KonMari thing work for you? Are you still doing it? Do I regret doing it in any way, or have I kept up? Hmm. Yes, I have kept up with it, meaning that the way that I like organize my house and my space is related to things that spark joy in me and also like letting my possessions and how I naturally kind of use them affect how I organize them. Over these last couple months, during quarantine, this has been a good amount of time for me to like really make this space what I want it to be. And I've been doing that and it feels really good. It feels great, so I'm happy about that. I'm gonna go back with just that black a little bit under the eye in even further than I want it. This is what I should have done first. And now when I pack that goldy shadow on, it will go over some of the black and be like a slightly different color. I think the KonMari method is like what made me survive tour in the way that I did. Like I had to like put my entire life into like a specific amount of suitcases and then also living in New York for Broadway. Like I moved back to New York for six months and I had to like decide what to bring and like how to organize a space that I was only going to be in temporarily. And you better believe that having done the KonMari method made all of that way easier. Under the eye mascara is always a bitch but I like to do it like a little messier. Like this look has to last through 20 songs before I get to sing Burning Down the House. So, you know, like she's gonna get a little rock and roll by the end, whether I like it or not. <laughs> so at this point, I usually spray my eyes. I'm gonna use that setting spray. And yeah, and let your mascara smudge like that. What's interesting is like when I look further away, I kind of like the smudge side better than the non-smudgy side. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna smudge up this side. Sometimes I would do this, especially when it would be super hot. Like when things don't stick to that little spot right on the edge. And so what I would do is like take some mascara like that and like... Like very abstracty thing like this so that it doesn't look like a mistake. It looks like, oh yeah, no, she meant to just be like all over the place. And then let's go back with that gold, top it off. Oh yeah, no, she meant to do all of this. Okay, I'm actually gonna use an eyeshadow palette to contour. This is the Juvia's Place Warrior Two, A beautiful matte eyeshadow palette. Let's take this shade Kana, the kind of like gray toned um, matte beige. Kim's contour is like, whoop! Chris's is really more like where my actual contour is. And just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of Kufuru right here. See, just a little bit in the backs of the cheeks. Oh my god, pretty! Okay, and then I'm gonna go back with that powder brush, which just has the AJ Crimson powder on it and buff this out. Okay, that was it. See how this, like, now my cheeks look like cheeks instead of flat canvases? I actually have another kind of fluffy blending brush, and I'm gonna take just a touch of Kufuru, just a touch. Chris's nose contour is the same as Kimberly's, really, meaning that it's pretty subtle. And I'm gonna take that blending brush that I use for my eye crease, and I'm gonna blend here. Just that, do you see that? Connecting eyebrows and noses everywhere. D but do you see how that just completely changed my face shape? That was just a tiny little thing. Ugh, I love it. And I'm just gonna blend it out. All right, and I'm gonna use the same palette to shape my brows. I got one angled brush from this Juvia's Place collection, I gotta use it. I'm gonna start with Yodit, Yodit, which is this kind of like 
yellowy brown. See, when I would do my brows, oh, that's actually kind of like a nice match for my hair. I have less brows than I had for the run. So this is like, I'm really drawing on something that's not there. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with the color match that's happening right now. And I just do flat, like kind of very like bing bing. I don't do like because these are my real eyebrows. So when I move my eyebrows, they move. <laughs> so I try to just do what they do. And then I'm gonna take Kufuru medium brown shade. And I'm gonna take that just on the out. Out. Just on the out. Just on the outer edge of the brow. Oh yeah. Hi. And then I'm just gonna do little like stamp. There we go, like even up a little higher to make it look like hair. I'll take the brush I used for my nose. I'll just take that shade Kufuru. We've connected the nose contour to the crease. Now let us connect the crease to the brow. Look how short my little brow hairs are here in front. Like there's almost none there. Okay, cool. So that's kind of eyes and brows. For that that brow bone. This is like a teeny tiny fluffy brush from Juvia's Place. And I'm gonna take this. Again, it's Fenty. This is incredible. It is the How Many Carrots? Diamond Bomb. I bought this and I was like, I don't think this is legit or like I, I wasn't into the hype and I started using it. I'm in the hype. I have bought the hype. The hype is mine. The hype is real. Okay. And let's answer another question while I'm doing it. What quarantine hobbies have I developed, if any? So I'm gonna take a little bit of this, just on this crazy tiny brush, and I'm gonna pack this right here. So my grandfather was a, a gardener. He is like, had a green thumb. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take this with my finger, actually, and just pop this on the tops of my cheeks, like that. <gasps> And I, I tried to like start gardening when I lived in Brooklyn. I just like couldn't get the hang of it. I killed so many bromeliads, like it's not even funny. Then I moved here and we put all our houseplants outside and like everything thrived and it was crazy. And so I'm like, huh, maybe I, maybe I do know how to do this. Maybe I can. I got connected with a local nursery down here a kind of food activist guy named Ian who sold sold plants and so I bought a bunch of uh, vegetable plants from him and then it just kind of took off and so like I've got this crazy garden right now where I've got corn, I've got tomatillos, I've got basil, uh, beans, sweet potatoes, eggplants. It was a thing that I could really just like invest so much time in and it was a great kind of calming antithesis to like Instagram. Honestly, if you need a hobby that like forces you to just slow the fuck down, we're talking like it's gonna take like months for like food to grow. So it's like the instant gratification is not a thing. And so almost everything else in my life that I do, there's like some element of instant gratification. And so this has been just like a great kind of reset and a thing for me to be like, nope, you're actually just gonna put in a little bit of effort over a long period of time and then you will get a result and that has just been a beautiful experience to have okay blush is that what i want to use for my blush i think it is this is the liquid foundation brush from juvia's place and i'm going to use this beauty bakery scoops elise blush palette i mean as the lip color has evolved over the years for this look, uh, I've really adjusted the blush to match. So when I would do a more nudie, corally lip, I would do like a more corally, nudie blush. Then when I started adding the red lip, I started adding a little bit more warmer, reddish tones, like good old bright red. But because I'm gonna do the red lip, but I have this eye that's like a little more yellowy, I think I can get away with this. So I'm gonna do... French Tarte, which is this matte orange. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be hella pigmented too. Yep. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeousness. This is like the warm alternative to my American Utopia look, don't you think? Okay, and then I'm gonna just use the other side of the brush and take 
the shade creme brulee, which is like a salmon, a peachy salmon pink. Uh, right on top of that blush. It's a blush topper, let's call this. Very subtle. Nice. More of that on the cheeks, right on the apples. Actually kind of impressed with that, but I think I do need a slightly deeper shade for the back. Yeah, and I think that shade's gonna be Bella from Juvia's Place. Just a gorgeous kind of matte, you know, corally, lovely, beautiful, universal coral shade. Juvia's Place is super known for their eyeshadows and their pigmentation, and looks like their blush pigmentation did not come to play either. Okay, so just the backs. Yeah, look. Just a little bit in the backs of the cheeks. I'm just gonna use one brushes worth. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my powder brush and just buff her out. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take a little bit of this around up here too. Get some color back in the face. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, that's kind of neat. And then let's touch up that contour again. Mm -hmm. Right on the sideburn. Just a, oh God, that's too much already. Just a little bit on my jaw. Woo! Okay, and now one more spritz with the Plain Jane Beauty. I'm gonna do the whole face this time, so just with the eyes closed. Hmm. Oh, someone asked what black queens or kings have inspired me. One black queen who is insanely inspiring to me just as a person, and that's Mary Cherry. You know, I knew of her on the scene in Brooklyn before I even started doing drag, and then as I started getting into drag, like, she was always around and, like, always just such an inspiration in her performance. She is one of those performers that brings her intense, amazing energy to everything, and it's, like, almost like watching like a force of nature like on stage right like she has this one number where she she lip syncs Joan Jett's cherry bomb and she smashes uh, coke cans with her with her boob she's a legend she's a Brooklyn nightlife legend in fact she created the Brooklyn nightlife awards she's that legendary but recently she has been doing a ton of incredible organizing really focusing the attention on some specific organizations like the okra project which is a really great organization pop up their website and i'll link them down below providing food and medical support for for black trans people and it's just like very inspiring and i've heard her recently talking about how she like kind of was on a break from drag and she was trying to think of like what to do and like how to be a part of this movement and she was like mary just had to come back like she needed to show up as tarot cards and i talk about in my listen up video about drag there's something about putting on a drag persona that removes the responsibility of self and allows you to maybe not necessarily say things that you wouldn't say if you weren't in drag but at least gives you the confidence and the the costume the the look the appearance the the like you're dressing to be the confident person that you want to be anyway so like so mary cherry's been doing incredible actions in mccarran park stand up for trans rights stand up for trans rights Stand up for women's rights! Stand up for women's rights! Stand up for queers' rights! Stand up for queers' rights! And stand up for black lives! And stand up for black lives! If you're in New York or in Brooklyn and you can go out, wear a mask if you do, but go out and support her and all the other incredible queens in Brooklyn that are doing some super important and legit work right now. Mary Cherry, a constant inspiration to me. I love her. I love you, girl. Yay. Okay, lips. I'm gonna tell the story about the lips. Spike Lee had seen our show maybe like 10 to 15 times. And it wasn't until like a week or so before we started filming that I actually met him. I just had never crossed paths with him and there wasn't like an official meet and greet thing before like we actually started filming. So I was curious to see like what, if anything, he thought of me and my makeup look. I'm warming up on stage as I do before every show in, in, our, in the Hudson Theater and uh, Spike is there. Spike is in the house. He's there kind of doing like a pre-visit thing with his crew, with some of his crew. He sees me and he says hi to me and I'd say hi and he says happy new year, it's just the new year. And then he goes, 
hey, what kind of lipstick, what kind of lipstick do you wear? What color lipstick do you wear in the show? And I'm like, I, just in my head, you know, like, I'm like, okay, this is the moment when Spike Lee, incredible genius director, like, says I shouldn't wear any makeup. Like, says, like, oh, it's too distracting from the show. Like, and so I'm like, I wear a pinky nude, and he goes, no, 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 no. no. And I'm like, oh, no. And then he goes, bright red. Fire engine red. F-D-N-Y red. And I'm like, what, what? And he's like, I want your lips to be nice and bright, and I want the nails to match. And I was like, okay. And he's like, you got a lot of great facial expressions, got a lot of like close-up ideas. I really want your lips to pop. And I was like, I'm getting like emotional thinking about the fact that like Spike Lee told me to wear a bright red lip. It's so inspiring to like see someone, especially an artist at that level, see you and like respect you and like want to like be like, I see what you're doing. Let's heighten it and make it even better. Like versus like, let's stifle you. And I don't know. So I'm, I'm wearing a bright red lip because Spike Lee told me to. I think it made the look, like it really brought the look to a new level. This is the red lip that I wear in the film, which you will see very soon, of David Byrne's American Utopia, directed by Spike Lee, and it is this. Colored Rains, Cherry Blossom. This is the matte red lip to end all matte red lips. I mean, you'll see. So I've got my, my lips are all dry. I had wiped off all of the balm that was remaining. The thing with this is like, you just gotta do it and get over it. But let's see if I could do that or if I'm gonna go crazy. But the kind of lip we're talking here is like one swipe opacity. I have not dipped back in, this is still Just one dunk. Ugh. And I like to almost like blend it up under my mustache. That's it. Then I have to go get her. I think that's it. Right? Are we done? Is that the finished look? Let me spray my face one more time. Okay, let me just fix my hair as best I can really quick and I will be right back. So this is the finished look. This is my kind of like warmer version of my American Utopia makeup look using all products from black owned makeup brands. My hair hasn't been this long in years, but I, this is, I'm really happy with this. Like I was kind of nervous to try to do a look that I got so down and then like switch up so many elements of it and still try to get it down. But other than my lips are getting all over my teeth, I think this is pretty good. I love a cool red matte lip because it makes her teeth look so white. And my teeth are not white. Let's just be clear. Anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts about any of the products that I've used. If you have any suggestions for maybe other products from black owned makeup brands to try out or skincare, anything that's been working for you. I'd really like to continue to push the focus on buying black. I want more creators to do that too. I don't want this to be a kind of trend. It's gonna take more than one week of work to kind of undo centuries of systemic oppression and racism. So I feel like we can, you know, I think it's a super small thing to do as like a influencer to try to actively continuously promote 
products from black owned businesses, but I think it's totally doable and it will really help. So I don't know if any of these products were maybe new to anybody, um, but the, a lot of them were new to me and I'm really, I'm really grateful for all of the people out there who've already been sharing these products for years and years and years. Shout out to Jackie Ina, who's the first person I know that did a black owned makeup brand tutorial that was years ago and wanting to do one ever since she did, did hers. So if you want more, kind of looks like this that are like not full on drag looks. I'm down, I'm down baby. I'm apparently, you know, she can paint an editorial look as well, not just a full on clownfish. So who knew, who knew? Again, check out the other videos in this little three part series. My black owned nail polish brand nail tutorial for this nail look. Also check out my full drag face black owned makeup brand tutorial where I talk really in depth about the importance of buying black and wealth redistribution. That video should have been a prerequisite for watching this one already, but if for some reason you missed it, please go back and check it out right now. And thank you all for just being interested and sticking around. I'm excited to keep on creating things for and with you and yeah, thank you so much for being here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you really want to support me and my videos, please consider becoming a patron of mine, which means that you can donate a dollar per video to me. All right, thank you so much for watching, y'all. I'm Kimberly Clark. Black Lives Matter. Defund the police. And wear a goddamn mask. Bye!